In the golden age of minicomputers like the PDP-8 and other fridge-sized machines, you didn't have to worry about your next fancy graphics card. All you really needed was a serial terminal, like this classic beauty here. By using essentially two wires, a CPU sends text to a video display and receives your keyboard input. Nowadays these vintage terminals are kind of hard to find and a bit of a pain to operate and maintain as well. On modern PCs, especially on Linux-alike systems, we all use terminal emulations instead, also called a console window. So even today this somewhat archaic but direct gateway to a computer remains an important and powerful tool. In today's video let's build our own very minimalistic serial terminal out of just three ICs. Well, two of them are 80 mega 328 micros, also known as barebone Arduinos. But hey, vintage terminals used small micros like the Intel 8080 too. This is how the final product will look like. Let me install a simple loopback wire to show you the circuit in action. We are getting 60 by 25 characters here on a configurable full 256 character set. And it understands common NC control sequences too. Let's try to clear the screen by typing escape open square bracket H to move the cursor back home and escape open square bracket J to clear anything from the cursor onwards. We can position the cursor in X and Y directions too with escape square bracket 20 D and escape square bracket 20 G for example. This implementation is lightning fast compared to a vintage terminal. It runs reliably with up to 230 kilobits per second so that you could rewrite the entire VRAM 15 times per second. If that sounds like a viable alternative to your current GPU, let's build it now. Before we dive in, here's an overview of how things play together. I'll use and combine several tricks I've touched upon in earlier videos here on my channel. I'll put links for you in the description. The dashed rectangle contains the functionality of our minimal terminal with the two microcontrollers. Let's call them Alice and Bob. On the bottom we have interfaces for a PS2 keyboard, a computer and a VGA monitor. Alice reads out the PS2 keyboard, converts its scan codes to ASCII code and sends it over to our computer via a serial UART interface, that is a universal async receiver and transmitter. Alice also reads back the UART and sends any received ASCII codes over to Bob. And you have already seen the loopback test in action where we made the terminal receive its own output. Bob's job is to take these ASCII codes, store them in a 60 by 25 character VRAM along with managing cursor position, scrolling and NC control sequences. At the same time Bob will not only generate the VGA sync signals with rock solid timing but also send out a stream of pixel data to the VGA monitor by the aid of a simple shift register. So Bob is pretty busy. To help him out we'll overclock him with a 24 MHz crystal, which is way out of spec. If that sounds like good fun, let's grab a breadboard and get started. However, while programming our micros I am going to use a standard 16 MHz crystal and program Bob's and Alice's low fuse byte to make Bob use his crystal as a clock source and output it on his pin PB0 and to make Alice use this signal as her external clock. I am uploading the sketch examples Arduino ISP into the Arduino Uno which will serve as an ISP programmer. Select Tools, Programmer, Arduino as ISP for that. Now let's quickly wire up both ICs on this breadboard here. I am connecting power and ground, stabilize with 100 nanofarad caps and tie the reset pin 1 high with a 20k resistor. The quartz between pin 9 and pin 10 needs two 22 picofarad caps to ground. Now I am connecting the Arduino's ISP to Bob, that is pin 13 to PB5, pin 12 to PB4, pin 11 to PB3 and pin 10 to reset. Next, find the file boards.txt within your Arduino IDE installation. Minus add C program files x86, Arduino, 
Hardware Arduino AVR and open it. Find the section for the Arduino Nano. Mine is at line 141, I think. In line 149, change the low fuse byte from hex FF to hex BF and save the file. Remember to close and reopen the Arduino IDE for these changes to become active. Now select Target Board Arduino Nano, Processor 80 Mega 328P, and select Tools Burn Bootloader. We can verify we are getting the clock signal out on pin PB0 by hooking up this LED. We see the LED growing dimly because it's now on half of the time. Now we repeat the process for Alice with low fuse byte hex F0. Because Alice now expects an external clock, the upload no longer works. Let's feed her Bob's clock and things should be all right. We are ready to upload sketches into Alice and Bob. Let's begin with Alice and upload the LED blink example. I'm using this breakout board here to connect to the microcontroller serial port. I am wiring TXD to pin 2 and RXD to pin 3 and DTR via 100 nanofarads over to the reset pin 1. So that is looking good, the LED is blinking. Let's try the same with Bob now. And this is also working. Great! Now I'll upload the terminal firmware sketches. Links are in the description. Terminal A is for Alice and Terminal B is for Bob. And I'll change the crystal from 16 MHz to 24 MHz. I wire up the rest of the connection now, like we have discussed in the overview. A link to the exact schematics is also in the description. And we are done! It's time to power this up and do a loopback test. Let me connect my VGA monitor and also this old PS2 keyboard here. Alice expects the keyboard's data line on PC5 and the clock line on PC4. And yeah! There you have our looper test, it's working. Now we can basically connect any serial device to this terminal. For example, let's connect my PC to it through this USB to serial converter. Now we can also cut and paste some text to the terminal. As you can see, it's lightning fast. Just for fun, I have implemented a bitrate divider in powers of 2, so we can select lower rates down to 28.8 kilobits per second with two jumpers on PC0 and PC1. Let's try that too. Okay, it's a lot slower now. So, what next? Well, I don't know about your ideas, unless you put them in the comments, but I have designed this thing to communicate with my own CPU. It's called the Minimal UR CPU system. See my video series about it and build one for yourself if you are interested. Anyway, let's configure our terminal to 115 kilobits per second and hook it up. And there we have Tetris again. Well, I don't know about you, but I already kind of like my little terminal a lot. I made me a PCB design out of it, so let's try that too. I have socketed the 24 MHz crystal, so I can always swap it back to 16 MHz to upgrade the firmware. 
One could, for example, implement additional ANSI control sequences, more board rates, custom character sets, or customize the keyboard to a local style. But as for now, I will leave that up to you and this is it for today. Please hit subscribe if you want to see more of this content and thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye.